Hello, this is Jason Sater, instructor at Dublin Sider High School. Uh, today I'm going to um, share with you um, another flashcard video. I know it's been a long time since I've published, but I kind of make these for my students and um, I just kind of stick with my schedule. So I'll, I'll try to make more of these as many of you have requested those in my comments. Um, so what I'm going to do is show you tissues just in random order and um, I'm going to let you guess so I'll give you sort of a five second countdown and then I'll tell you why it is the tissue it is and what you might confuse it with and how to be sure that you're um, um, identifying your tissues properly just using some basic classifying strategies so let's go ahead and get started Alright, this is epithelial tissue and this is simple cuboidal tissue. Now you can see on the left there that these kind of look like um, a group of buns you might bake in the oven. And um, one of the reasons it's epithelial is because it has that apical surface that's always sort of open and free. Now when you look at the microscope slide on the right, you see these round structures and you might have a hard time getting that down to cuboidal. But if you look in really closely, all those are little rolled up um, slices of tubes that will um, filter your blood and your kidneys made out of these little cuboidal cells. And it's one layer, which makes it simple. All right, next. All right, this is haline or hyaline cartilage. Um, this is what I tell my students is a good way to remember this. I think it looks like grape jelly with some sort of seeds in it. So I always just tell my students this little phrase, hey, pass me that grape jelly. And that might help you remember that it's hay line cartilage or high line cartilage. So use that little memory tool to help you remember what this cartilage looks like. Grape jelly. And of course, this is a connective tissue. All right, here's our next one. All right, this is pseudo-stratified epithelial tissue. It's epithelial because it's a lining and it has a free surface. Here we see tissue that lines the inside of your trachea. It's ciliated. And you can kind of see the nuclei, those cells in the cartoon there on the left are sort of like some are on the top, some are on the bottom. I think these kind of look like bowling pins where some are up and some are down. I don't really have a good trick to memorize the name of this one other than it doesn't really fit any of the other categories. Some of the other cells don't reach all the way to the top. So this is again pseudo stratified epithelium and it's ciliated. On right, our next one. All right, this is dense fibrocartilage. You can see a lot of just fibers in here. This is found in the disc that make up your back. Um, I don't have an excellent way to remember this other than you see a lot of little fibery things that look like a fuzzball. You might pick off your sweater or something, so that, that's made out of fiber. The problem is there's lots of other uh, cartilages that have the word fiber in it, but the fibers in, de in this um, dense tissue are really, really fine and close together. Next. This is smooth muscle, and um, these are spindle shaped cells. If you don't know what spindles are, it's kind of a stick you wrap string up on, so they kind of get fat in the middle and skinny on the ends. In the picture there, um, this is actually really hard to identify under a microscope because it usually doesn't look as good as this picture here. The picture on the right, you might confuse this with stratified squamous, so that would be flat cells that are stacked up. How do you know it's not stratified squamous? Well, usually muscle stains red. And the other way you know it's not stratified squamous is it doesn't have a free surface. So all of our epithelial tissues have a free surface. So if you look at the picture, it almost makes it more confusing because the cartoon picture shows um, like the intestinal tract and so that, that's definitely lined with epithelium but um, this isn't epithelial tissue because it doesn't have an apical surface. Um, 
you may see this look a lot of different ways, but look for those spindle shapes. And I don't know if your instructor might give you a, a picture like this where the organs are found or not, but um, no free surface, no, um, it's not epithelial. All right, here's our next one. All right, this is simple um, columnar. Just remember our column, like on a, the front of a building, like the White House, you have these big white posts that are called columns in architecture. Um, again, it's epithelial because it has a free surface. If you look over there on the right, there's a space or definite top or open. Um, technically, that's called the apical surface, but I like to use the word free because it, it, there's nothing there. Um, all the nuclei are kind of on the same level. That is also another clue. It's um, columnar instead of pseudostratified. If some nuclei are sort of high and some are low on the columns, it's most likely pseudostratified. But this is simple columnar, one layer. Next. All right, this is dense connective tissue sorry, dense connective tissue, and you can kind of see this is made of tendons and ligaments. All these fibers are straight in a line, and they, they wrinkle up a little bit when they're prepared on microscope slides. Um, not a lot of cells here. The little darker dots on the right are cells. This could easily be confused with skeletal muscle because skeletal muscle is made of these cylinders that kind of look like this. But how do you know it's not skeletal muscle? Well, if you only have a picture and you don't have the um, cartoon on the left that shows this is making up uh, tendons and ligaments, um, there's no striations in these cells, so that tells us it's not skeletal muscle. I always think of these as, as being very densely packed together. All right, this next, one, this next one should be really easy based on the picture in the cartoon on the left, but I'm going to give you some ways to identify it if you're not given a picture like that. All right, this is cardiac muscle, and we see the heart there, and at this point in your anatomy class, you probably should know that cardiac means heart. Now, if you don't have those kind of clues, what, what can we look at to tell us that this is cardiac muscle? Well, I, I say this little phrase that helps my students remember what cardiac muscle looks like. If you look closely on the picture on the right, the microscope picture, you can see sort of branching. And I call these Y's, like the letter Y. And then I say, why are you breaking my heart? And that helps you remember that there are Y's in cardiac muscle. So it is striated, which are those little corduroy looking stripes in the cells. But at the end of each cell, there's a darker stripe. Those are called intercalated discs that connect all these cardiac cells together. So that is another way to tell that it's not skeletal muscle. All right, our next one. This is skeletal muscle. So if you compare, I'm just going to go back one slide. Cardiac, look for the darker lines. This. This is not skeletal because those darker intercalated discs. Skeletal muscle has that corduroy appearance. So you see these, they're called striations in the tissue. And you also see nuclei stacked up very densely. Okay, let's compare this to dense connective tissue back here. This doesn't look anything like skeletal muscle because it doesn't have the striations and there's no multiple nuclei. Go back up here to um, skeletal muscle and you can see the big differences. Those are the things it could be confused with. So it's not cardiac because we don't see any Ys, we don't see any intercalated disc, and it's not dense connective tissue because it has striations. All right, next. Okay, this is blood. We can kind of easily identify blood by these flat, smeared, reddish, pinkish discs. They don't have a nucleus in them. Red blood cells um, are anucleate. And so you never see um, um, nuclei in those cells. So if you see a bunch of just red smears, they're basically just little sacks of hemoglobin. So there's not much going on there. And then we have some white cells in this picture as well. And um, sort of at the top right side, you see a little dot. That's a platelet. If, if your class requires you to identify those, 
Um, looks like a mono site on the bottom there. Um, th those are that's what those are. Um, when you take a when you ch study blood, you'll have to learn to identify the uh, white cells, but we're not going to worry about that today. So blood is a pretty easy tissue to remember. It is a connective tissue, even though it's liquid. It has fibers. Uh, all, all connective tissues have a matrix and fibers. So we have plasma, and but the fibers for um, blood are um, the platelets, which only show up during clotting. All right, here's our next one. All right, this is simple squamous. The word squamous means fish scale, and these kind of look like scales. Um, if you look closely, a lot of people think those outlines on the right are individual cells, and this can kind of look like adipose tissue, but you have to really squint and look for individual flat cells over there that have individual nuclei. And so these are sort of like bunches of grapes that have been sliced. These are down in the bottom of your lungs. And the edges of those little compartments are made of simple squamous and the thinnest, some of the thinnest cells in your body are found here so we can um, allow oxygen to pass through that very quickly during respiration. So simple squamous, it's epithelial because it has a free surface and um, it's one layer thick so it's simple and the little scale like cells are called squamous or squamous cells. All right, next. This is areolar tissue, and you can see both types of fibers here. You see elastic fibers, which are the purple ones, and collagen fibers, which are the pink ones. You don't see a high density of cells. I have occasionally had students think this is nervous tissue because they see all these um, strings running through there and think they're axons and dendrites, but none of them ever hook up to cells. I, I think this looks like a box of spaghetti and linguine that got spilled together and they kind of have this pickup stick appearance. So areolar, both types of fibers, they're kind of loosely packed so it is a loose connective tissue and not very many cells. Um, remember this tissue is very good at absorbing water and we get edema when this um, um, absorbs water which is swelling from injuries and disease. All right, next. This is reticular tissue. Reticulated means interwoven or like a pattern of threads that are inter, um, intermixed together. The fibers in reticular cartilage are the oh, reticular tissue are the only um, fibers that I know of that branch. And if you look at this thing, it's got a very tree-like appearance and the fibers branch out. Now branch, don't confuse branching with crossing. Like if we go back here to areolar, these fibers are crossed, they, they lay across each other, but just like individual pieces of spaghetti laying on top of each other, they're not attached to each other. This tissue here literally branches out like tree branches or tree roots. So reticulated means branching. Um, there's a type of python called a reticulated python, and it looks like the scales on it have a pattern that looks like it's woven together, I guess. So that's the only place I know that the word reticulated is used that might be able to help you out there. And the branches are usually very dark. All right, our next tissue. Okay, this is adipose tissue, which is a type of fat tissue. Now, in the cartoon on the left, there's a blood vessel in it. That's what that circle with kind of the dark, fuzzy, whiskery area is supposed to be. Um, when these are prepared, the fat usually doesn't survive the preparation. So you, you have a bunch of empty spaces. This could be confused with that uh, simple squamous we saw right here. But look at the nuclei here on simple squamous. You have dot, 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 dot around each one of these chambers. Up here in um, this fat tissue, you don't really see that level of, um, you don't see that, that uh, the nuclei arranged in that pattern. These are just little storage sacs that we keep lipids in. All right, our next tissue This can be confused with um, pseudostratified epithelium, but this is transitional epithelium, and the cartoon picture on the left should give it away. 
Transitional epithelium stretches out, so when your bladder fills up, this gets thin like the walls of a balloon. And you may be shown versions of it where it's stretched thin. Um, you can tell it's not um, pseudostratified just by the number of layers there are. Pseudostratified is more columnar looking. This has sort of stacks. How do you know what it is? It's epithelial because it has an apical surface, okay? Just keep that theme of like categorizing tissues. Does this tissue have an apical surface or a top free surface? That'll tell you what category it is. All right. This one's incredibly easy with the picture of the bone in the picture. This is um, bone tissue or some people call it osseous tissue. It has that tree ring appearance. Those are called osteons, and there's a little blood vessel that goes down in the middle of each one. Um, easy to remember because bones are white, and this is the only um, white tissue you'll probably encounter in um, introductory anatomy. Um, a pretty easy one. It's got a very distinct look. The tree rings, the, the, the white color tell you it's bone. All right, this is our last one. Okay, this is stratified squamous. And you can see these little, looks like little stacked up eyeballs over there on the right. So this is um, stratified squamous because it has a free surface. All right, I hope this review was helpful to you. If you have any questions or if you're looking for um, additional information, just uh, let me know in the comments. And... Uh, I hope these are useful to you for studying, and good luck on your tests and quizzes. Again, this is Mr. Sater at uh, Dublin Sider High School.